you know, how we experience this time is up to us, you know, what choices we make, and the reaction to those choices are definitely up to us. Uh, if we choose to, uh, you know, leave our hand in the monkey trap, and uh, for those of you who don't know what a monkey trap is, it's all they do is take a coconut, tie it down, you know, to the ground with leather and stake it in the ground, and then they uh, fill it full of rice, drill a hole in it, fill it full of rice. The monkey sticks his hand in. He's too greedy to let go of the rice. And so the hunter comes along and, and snags the monkey because he's stuck. You know, and all he has to do is let go, open his hand. He's free. You know, let go. And that's us. That's all we have to do. Open our hand, let go. You know, it's that simple. And so, uh, you know, that's what we're doing right now. We need to move, you know, with our inner guidance. And if we're getting strong inner guidance that we need to go here or there, we need to do it with loving detachment, not through fear. But we need to move with this flow. Now, I want to tell another little story. And uh, I've told this before, so bear with me. But there's a story about a man and the elephant. And what happened is that this uh, disciple was in there, he was studying, you know, relentlessly doing all of his practices, you know, had everything down. And finally, the, the, you know, in the ashram, and the yogi comes in, and he goes, it's time. And so the yogi touches him on the forehead, and he just explodes in light and has this huge awakening. And what he does is he starts to realize, he goes, wait a second, you know, God is omnipresent. The creator is omnipresent in everyone and everything. He goes, I am God, everyone is God, everything is God. And he's totally blissed out, and he starts walking out in the street, you know, saying this over, and he's just just blissed out, seeing everything. And all of a sudden, this rogue elephant starts running down down the road. And uh, and so he turns around, looks at the elephant, and, and, you know, the man on the elephant is screaming at him, get out of the way, get out of the way. And so the disciple is going, you know, I am God. Everything is God. The elephant is God. The man is God. You know, like, I, God is love. No harm shall come to me. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm totally, you know, we're all, we're all one, you know. And so, so the guy yells him again, get out of the way. And now this elephant is coming down on him, you know. And, and uh, he's saying, you know, I am God. The elephant is God. God is love. No harm. Next thing you know, the elephant stomps on him and grabs him, throws him up against the wall, <laughs> you know, and uh, smashes him up pretty good. So the disciple goes crawling back into the ashram, you know, and, he, and, and the yogi turns around and looks at him, and he goes, Master, he said, what, you know, what happened? You know, Guru, tell me, what, what, what happened? He said, I was totally enlightened. I was totally awake, you know. I, 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 I walked out. And he said, I said, and this elephant just trashed me. You know, he goes, he goes, how did that happen? And, you know, the guru turns around to him and he says, you didn't listen to the God on the elephant. And uh, the other thing he said was, it wasn't the elephant's truth. <laughs> you know, so, so there's two things we have to realize is one, you know, the, you know, the source, whatever you want to call it, is speaking to us in so many ways. And we need to listen to the prophet. We need to listen to the people warning us and the people telling us, get out of the way, get out of the way. We need to listen to that. It's just as important as anything else. And we need to listen to the fact that that elephant had a different truth and, and was on a different program. And it may not have been the same program that we are on. So uh, it's just a little reality check and it gets us back down to earth, gets our feet back on the ground and, and you know, realize that you know, uh, you know, <laughs> the uh, uh, BP is the elephant. You know, it doesn't care. It doesn't. It's not on the same truth that we're on. You know, and uh, you know, and there's a lot of people warning us about these elephants out there. So uh, uh, we need to start listening to them, and we need to realize too that that we aren't going to be hearing the truth from from you know those who have, you know. Uh, that are, are have invested in the elephant, you know. <laughs> they don't want the elephant to be killed, right? So, so they're going to say, oh, no, you know, this didn't really happen. Everything's cool, you know, everything's fine. And just ignore that big uh, black spot out there that used to be the Gulf. 
But uh, so, uh, you know, and everybody who who's has a handout in that program, and we know who they are, and they've all taken some very big handouts from these companies, mega corporations, uh, you know, they're, they're going to tell you, you know, that uh, there's no problem. Elephant's totally under control. You know, don't worry about it. You know, go back to your cubicle, go back to your job, turn on your TV, and uh, we'll, our corporate sponsored TV will tell you that everything's okay and there's nothing to worry about. And, and uh, although if you take your camera down there, they will fine you $40,000 and give you a Class D felony charge. So uh, uh, now that's quite interesting in itself. So, so if there is no problem, you know, everything's okay and everything's under control, why is it that no reporters can go down there and film it and, uh, you know, and why aren't they airing what they're filming, you know? So, so uh, you know, why would they pass, pass a law and who's enforcing that law? That's the other question. You know, you've got uh, these, these basically BP armies enforcing the law down there on, on American shores. So no doubt about it, we've been invaded, you know, and we've lost our constitutional rights, you know, so freedom of speech is gone. Uh, you know, several other freedoms went out the door, too, and uh, the people, it's sad, you know, it's very sad. The people won't even look at you if you go down there. You know, we just interviewed James Fox, and he gave us the lowdown, and, and he said that, you know, people can't talk to you. You know, you can get arrested for talking to people. You know, if you have a camera and you're part of the news, you can have your camera taken away from you. Uh, people are getting deathly ill. They're getting very sick from, from the fumes. Uh, from the methane and the benzene and everything else that's coming up. Uh, you know, it's just not a pretty picture, and we're not being told the half of it. So anyway, uh, you know, it's another big lesson, basically. Uh, you can't miss it. You know, you have to realize that basically the mainstream news is not telling you anything. They're not telling you what's really going on. They never have. They're not going to tell you about free energy. They're not going to tell you about new healing technologies, they're not going to tell you about the mess that they're creating. You know, they're, you're just not going to hear it in the mainstream media. So uh, why even bother? Why let them inform you? Why not seek outside the box? Because it's their box. They created this box, and they want you in it. And it's time to wake up and start seeing outside the box. The, um, the other thing, too, is that, uh, you know, I, when, when he told me that, that the water samples that they took we're 150 times more toxic than it takes to kill the fish. I just, you know, I, my heart just sank, and I just said, you know, I, they did it. You know, they they killed the Gulf. I can't, I can't believe they did that. And they were allowed to do it, and even the EPA told them not to spray the core exit, that that was 11 times more toxic, and and they did it. They did it anyway. They just ignored every, every agency, every... Uh, Everybody, they just did it. You know, they did what they wanted to do, and it, there was no integrity in it and uh, no honesty, no science. Uh, it was just a full-blown assault on, on life itself, on the earth itself. So, uh, you know, it's uh, don't know what to say about that. Don't want to beat it into the ground, but, you know, it would be a good idea to really start paying attention to this because it's uh, what's going on. It's not a pretty picture. Now, there are some, some Restore America plans, and, and all of these patriots, you know, real patriots, are actually starting to band together and rise up and take our rights back and, and you know, bring back the Constitution, which has been ripped to shreds by the past two or three administrations. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of hope there, and I hope people get behind the people that are actually trying to do something and get behind the reporters that are putting their life on the line and the people that are actually bringing this information out so people can have the truth, you know, they can have the facts. And, and, uh, and you know, because without the truth and without the facts and if you're told everything's okay, uh, you're, you know, <laughs> you're going to be in trouble, you know, basically because, uh, you know, same thing with the economy. You know, when you're told everything is cool, don't worry about it. You know, we can just print more money. Uh, you know, it's, it's all going to come down in the end, you know. So so we need to start paying attention to that as well. And and to me, you know, I people go, you know, 
you know, why are you doing this? You know, are you full of anger? Are you full of rage? And and I said, no, I'm full of love for this planet and the people on this 